work and learn. Meet light, meet max. Sakliya karagani mata my SLT app ke log bina. Work and learn. Meet light, meet max. Sakliya karagani mata my SLT app ke log bina. Aar apni mess mein kya nahi thena obata? Dim liquid within rupees C ya ka itiriyak. Hari masuloi. Tonight on first at nine, this Monday, the 9th of January, 2023. Best alternative: Sri Lanka needs extensive cancellation of debt. Hedge funds and investors impede on debt relief, says economists and development experts worldwide. Pricing formula: Cabinet approves implementation of a cost-reflective electricity tariff formula, based on which the tariffs are to be increased. Baseless. The Conservator General of Forests refute claims that Sri Lankan forest cover has reduced to 16%. And external sector. Earnings from workers' remittances in November records the highest in 2022. From Ada Verana, this is Ada Verana First at Nine with Anuradhi Wickramasinghe. From Studio 24 in Colombo. Good evening and thank you for joining us on First at Nine. We have a number of coverages lined up for you tonight. Starting off with our top story. Over 180 economic experts globally have resonated in their solution for Sri Lanka's debt crisis as a cancellation of the island's nation's debt. Speaking to The Guardian, they stated that while it would pave the way for recovery, hedge funds are holding back on the much-needed debt relief the country seeks as part of securing a $3 billion loan from the IMF. According to 182 economists and development experts from around the world, some of the world's most powerful hedge funds and other investors are holding up vital help for crisis hit Sri Lanka by their hardline stance in debt relief negotiations. In a statement released to The Guardian yesterday, the group said extensive debt cancellation is needed to give the economy a chance of recovery and that Sri Lanka would be a test case of the willingness of the international community to tackle a looming global debt crisis. The group, including the Indian economist Jayati Ghosh, Thomas Piketty, the author of the best-selling book Capital, and Greece's former finance minister Yanis Varoufakis, said private sector creditors such as investment companies and hedge funds are preventing a deal. The statement said that debt negotiations in Sri Lanka are now at a crucial stage and that all bilateral, multilateral and private lenders must share the burden of restructuring with assurance of additional financing in the near term. Private creditors own almost 40% of Sri Lanka's external debt stock, mostly in the form of international sovereign bonds. Although the higher interest rates levied on the bonds mean they receive more than 50% of external debt payments. The group of economic experts noted that such lenders charged a premium to lend to Sri Lanka to cover their risks, which accrued them massive profits and contributed to Sri Lanka's first ever default in April 2022. They added that lenders who benefited from higher returns because of the risk premium must be willing to take the consequences of that risk. Sri Lankan officials have been carrying out negotiations since an economic crisis forced the Sri Lankan government to default for the first time in the country's history last spring and work a financial agreement with the International Monetary Fund. Sri Lankan officials are currently waiting for India to announce its final decision by the end of January regarding the request to restructure its debt while also resuming talks with China regarding the restructuring of the debt owed to China. A loan from the International Monetary Fund will only be provided once the Washington-based organization is confident Sri Lanka's debts are sustainable, but the 182 economists fear the tough stance adopted by private creditors will result in a poor deal for Colombo. The statement by the 182 economists and development experts added that the Sri Lankan case will provide an important indicator of whether the world, and the international financial system in particular, is equipped to deal with the increasingly urgent questions of sovereign debt relief and sustainability. It added that it would also indicate whether the international financial will be able to ensure a modicum of justice in international debt negotiations. 
Therefore, the experts emphasize that it is crucial not only for the people of Sri Lanka but to restore any faith in a multilateral system that is already under fire for its lack of legitimacy and basic viability. Now, the Cabinet approves the implementation of a cost-reflective electricity tariff formula based on which the tariff will be increased. However, they are yet to make a decision on a time frame to implement it. This proposal is expected to be introduced to the Public Utilities Commission. Last week, Minister of Power and Energy Kanjana Vijay Sekara presented the proposed electricity tariff structure to the Cabinet of Ministers. As per the proposed tariff structure, the current unit rate of 8 rupees for households utilizing 30 units or less will be raised to 30 rupees, a 375% hike. The tariff for 31 and 60 units consumed will be increased 370% to 37 rupees from the current 10 rupees. The 10 rupee tariff per unit for households using units between 61 and 90 units will be increased to 42 rupees, a 420% increase. However, the consideration of the proposal was extended until today by the Cabinet for further observations. Today, the proposed electricity tariff was taken into discussion at the Cabinet meeting that was held in the evening. It was reported that the Cabinet had approved the implementation of a cost-reflective electricity tariff formula based on which the tariffs will be increased. It is also reported that further measures regarding the matter will be taken after the relevant proposal for the implementation of the tariff formula is referred to the Public Utilities Commission of Sri Lanka. However, the Cabinet is yet to take a decision on a time frame to implement it. Now, the SLPP and the UNP are expected to discuss with the district leaders on how they will be contesting the local government election. This decision was made during a meeting between both parties. This SLPP-UNP meeting comes in a backdrop where talks are underway in forming an alliance for the upcoming local government poll. A meeting between Sri Lanka Pozujana Peramuna and the United National Party was held last evening upon an invitation of President Ranil Vikramasinghe. Parliamentarian and Chairman Vajra Bevardhana, former Parliamentarian and Deputy Leader Ruan Vijayavardhana, General Secretary Palitharange Bandara, Ravi Karuna Nayaka and Sagal Ratnayaka has attended the meeting representing the UMP. Representing Sri Lanka Pudjana Peramuna, its National Organizer Basil Rajapaksha, General Secretary Sagar Karyavasam, Rohit Abe Gunavardhana, Mahinda Nandalut Gamage, Johnston Fernando and Sanjay Vedirmana had participated in the discussions. During the meeting, both parties decided to discuss with their district leaders on how they will be contesting at the local government election and take future steps accordingly. <laughs> Meanwhile, Sri Lanka Podujana Peramane completes presenting their election deposits for all local government bodies in Kurnagala and Puttalam. The governing party says they are ready to contest on whatever date the local government election will be held and added that they are confident in claiming victory. The governing party, the Sri Lanka Podujana Peramane, presented their election deposits for 13 local government bodies of the Colombo district. Matiwarni Pati Medine Tirnekar and Matiwarna Gomasaris Tuma. If Pati no one made the Matiwarni Sunda Api Sudan. Matiwarni Aldami Mutsahatino Gila Tudanaka Usayatino and Apamudal Bandi Nani. Api Paksha Katheater Apita Viswasa Tiano Apime Chandavimasime Vishishra Jayakrahana Gano Akila. The SLPP also completed presenting their election deposits for all local government bodies of the Kurunagala and Putlam districts today. Porto Paksha Idriam Minava mean Hamujana Dina Vedapiliti. Samara Paksha Tama Lastin. Lastin at the Elia Vilakino Chandidian. Shaktimatu, Api Pakshe, Prasangan Hadi to Perla Pin, in Saptekis get one, Matuan Namudin, in Sapalapana, I turn to the Hassan Dahama, where Huda Tempat King is the Hikwa. Meanwhile, signatures were obtained for nominations of those who are contesting the local government election from SLPP in the districts of Kalthara and Anuradhapura. The Conservator General of Forests, KMA Bandara, said that the media reports implying that Sri Lanka's forest cover has de decreased to 16% are false. The Conservator General stated that if there is widespread forest destruction, as reported in the media, it should have been observed by the authorities. Recently, 
Media reports quoting the National Movement for Social Justice, headed by former Speaker Karujai Surya, circulated that Sri Lanka's forest density has reduced to 16% last year, based on a report. Further, it also reported that the former Speaker has also urged the Sri Lankan government to immediately address the emerging environmental crisis in Sri Lanka. However, in response, the President's Media Division issued a statement stating the assessment of forest cover is carried out every five years and the census conducted in 2020 is scheduled to be completed in June this year. The PMD said the natural forests of Sri Lanka stood at 29.15% or 1.9 million hectares of the total land extent based on the census conducted in 2015. The Conservator General of Forests, KMA Bandara, said although there has been some reduction in the amount of forests due to various development activities and other human activities in the country, there has definitely been no decrease in the amount of forests up to 16% as stated in the media reports. Bandara said if forest area in Sri Lanka is 16% of the total land extent as per the media reports, then the existing forest area in the country should be 1.04 million hectares, meaning 872,970 hectares of forest should have been destroyed during the seven years from 2015, which is 124,710 hectares per year and 341 hectares of forest destruction per day. He also said that the method used to assess the forests has not been described by them. The Conservator General further stated that if there is widespread forest destruction as reported in the media, it should have been observed by the Department of Forest, the Department of Wildlife Conservation, the Sri Lanka Police and the Sri Lanka Air Force, which monitors forests from the air. However, he says that such extensive forest destruction has not been reported to any of these institutions. He also stated that the Forest Department is updating forest maps and that no such forest destruction was observed during those activities. Concerning downturns in Sri Lanka's tourism sector is now coming to a turnaround as November numbers show a hopeful increase in inflow. This and much more right after this break. It's hard to keep up with the new when you're listening to the same old Slim Bread Week, a week for professionals. Sri Lanka recorded more revenue from tourism and workers' remittances in November last year. Workers' remittances increased to 384 million US dollars during November 2022, compared to 355 million US dollars in October, recording the highest monthly remittances so far during the year 2022. Tourism earnings in November 2022 also increased to 81 million US dollars, which is a 26 million US dollar increase compared to 55 million US dollars earned in October. According to the Central Bank report on the external sector performance during November 2022, earnings from merchandise exports declined by 17.9% over November 2021 to 994 million US dollars, recording a slight decline for the third consecutive month on a month-on-month -month basis. While declines in earnings were observed across all main categories, industrial exports mainly contributed to the contraction in earnings. However, cumulative export earnings during January and November 2022 increased by 6% over the same period in the last year to 12 billion US dollars, which was mainly driven by a 9.4% improvement in industrial exports amidst a decline in agricultural and mineral exports. Meanwhile, expenditure on merchandise imports declined by 18.1% in November last year to 1.4 billion US dollars compared to 1.7 billion US dollars in November 2021. According to the central bank, the decline in expenditure on investment goods mainly contributed to the decline in the import expenditure. Cumulative import expenditure from January to November 2022 amounted to 16.8 billion US dollars, which is a reduction compared to 18.3 billion US dollars recorded in the corresponding period in 2021. The deficit in the merchandise trade account narrowed to 450 million US dollars in November 2022 compared to the deficit of 553 million US dollars in November 2021. The cumulative deficit in the trade account during January and November 2022 meanwhile recorded at 4.8 billion US dollars, a decline from 7 billion US dollars over the same period in 2021. The CBSL also reported that the workers' remittances increased to 384 million US dollars during November 2022 in comparison to 355 million US dollars in October 2022, recording the highest monthly remittances thus far during 2022. 
Total departures for foreign employment were recorded at 25,376 during the month of November last year. Tourist arrivals increased notably in November 2022 to 59,759 from 42,026 arrivals recorded in October 2022. According to the CBSL, Russia, India, Germany, the United Kingdom and Australia remained the main source countries for tourist arrivals during the month, earning an income of 81 million US dollars. Tourism earnings in November is a 26 million US dollar increase compared to 55 million US dollars earned in October. Now, Sri Lankan shares fell for the third straight session today as investors await assurance on the IMF fund. The All Share Price Index closed 0.52% lower at 8,380.60. ASPI lost 0.77% in the first week of trade after losing 1.8% in December. The more liquid index S&P SL20 closed 1.23% lower at 2,580.87. The market witnessed a turnover of 2.3 billion rupees, slightly lower than 2022's daily average turnover of 2.9 billion rupees. The market saw a net foreign inflow of 12 million rupees. The net foreign inflow for the first week of January is 63 million rupees. The total foreign inflow of 2022 was 31 billion rupees. Lanka IOC dragged the index down to close at 4.4% lower at 192 rupees. LOLC fell 3.7% to close at 379 rupees and 3 cents and John Keel's holdings closed 16% lower at 135 rupees and 8 cents a share. Now let's take a look at how the rupee fared against other major currencies in the world today. Moving on, Argentina and China have formalized the expansion of a currency swap deal, allowing the South American country to increase its depleted foreign currency reserves. Argentina's government needs to rebuild reserves to cover trade costs and future debt repayments, and more reserves are a key objective of a major debt deal with the International Monetary Fund. The heads of the Argentine and Chinese central banks confirmed that the deal for the swap of currencies between both institutions has been activated and committed to deepening the use of Chinese yuan in the Argentine market. China is Argentina's second biggest trade partner after Brazil and the second most important destination for Argentine exports. And that is all we have for you tonight on First at Nine. Join us again tomorrow at the same time for more. Stay tuned for World News Tonight with Suzanne Shanali. Thank you for watching. Have a great night. For news and information you can trust 24 hours a day, visit adaverna.lk.